So you're broke. <laughs> and you need to make some money. Uh, I know what that feels like because I've been there. See, I came to South Florida about 30 some odd years ago as a musician. Had about $2,000 in my pocket. Big, huge, upright bass. And a 1976 Chevy Impala station wagon. Living large. Yeah, before that I was starving to death and freezing to death in Chicago. I was just out of music school in Indiana and I got... I got some job that didn't pay any money in uh, Chicago, calling people on the phone and trying to play a jazz bass at night. It was not working out. I was broke. I was starving. And I was freezing. And I didn't know anybody. And it, uh, I got a call, though. And I remember I was in this phone booth. Got a call from some guys I, I knew from music school. And it was this phone booth. I'm not even sure we have phone booths anymore. I haven't seen any around in a long time. But it was all broken out. It was some nasty area of Chicago. Snow everywhere. And if they said, this faint voice on the other line said, Hey, man, how'd you like to come down and work in the Caribbean on a cruise ship playing bass in the show band? <laughs> you know, and uh, that sounded really, really good at that time. So I got in my... Chevy Impala, loaded up my base, drove from Chicago all the way down to the port of Miami, and I worked on the cruise ships for a year as a bass player. Of course, I got fired my first month because even though I was an excellent sight-reading musician and could read a, almost anything you put in front of me, you had to know all these stupid songs by heart. And uh, it took me a month to learn them all, you know, T for Two and and all these dance songs. Uh, so I knew it after a month, but they were fed up with me. And so after the month, the, the, the guy, Booker there guy, he found another place for me with the, the Jerry Shaw band. <laughs> now, Jerry Shaw was an interesting character. Nice guy. Good man. Now, he talked like this, like he was the godfather. Okay, this was Jerry Shaw. He talked like this. But then when he sang, he sang like this. I left my heart in San Francisco. It was the weirdest thing in the world, man. He was playing drums. I was playing bass. And, you know, we played for all these cruise ship people for a year. And, hey, I'm thankful to him because he gave me a good idea. He said, listen. He said, listen, Matt, when you get off the cruise ships, you can make a lot of money as a booking agent. Booking private parties, weddings. Now, this was in the 80s, man, when people actually used bands. To do do this stuff, and the economy was also very good in the '80s in South Florida. So, in any case, uh, he said, "Listen, you just go to the catering manager and offer to bribe them. <laughs> I don't know if it's a really a bribe, but to give them ten percent, and then you could book bands all over the place. I did it. I did it in New York. You know, he's talking like that. He's like, man, you go and you give the catering directors." You give them ten percent. They, they they give you the keys. You gotta do a good job. But you go, you book a club dates. They call club dates. So, you know, I worked uh, for a year on the cruise ship, which was kind of bizarre. Eventually, you feel like you're just in a Fellini film. People come on every week, and it's they're totally hyped up. And after about two months, you you don't care. But um, hey, I saved two thousand dollars. There was a comedian on the ship. It said, "Hey, man." Um, you know, uh, I'm leaving my apartment in Fort Lauderdale and my uh, roommate will need a roommate. Uh, why don't you just go take my place? So uh, so I did. And I had another friend who was b b booking gigs down in Fort Lauderdale. So I decided to go to Fort Lauderdale. Of course, I showed up at this guy's house with my bass. And he said, who are you? <laughs> you know, and I said, I'm the, your new roommate. He says, I don't have a roommate. What happened to him? Well, can you make rent? Bam, I was there two years. Okay. So here I am, $2,000 in my pocket. Uh, I'm getting a couple gigs here and there from my friend, but not enough to live on. So I decided to take Jerry Shaw's advice and start hustling the catering directors to get gigs. So there wasn't even an internet back then, okay? So what I did is I just drove around in my Chevy to all the catering directors. I had um, made up some cheap business cards. I had a yellow Walkman with a recording of my friend singing. I'm not the best singer, but he sang real well. 
he played the guitar. We didn't really have a band. It was just him and me. Um, but I went around and started playing the tapes to people of, of my friends singing. I said, hey, we got a band. We'll play your wedding. Okay. At first, I went to the catering directors. I drove all over South Florida giving my cards out. But then I had the idea of ripping out the, the wedding announcements, looking up the phone on the newspaper, then looking up the phone numbers of the people who uh, who were getting married and calling them up and say, hey, man, are you looking for a, 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 a band for your wedding? Okay. And then what I would do is if they said, yes, they said, I'll come over this evening. It's always in the evening that you come over because that's when you can get the bride and the groom together and the whole family together. So, you know, of course they have the dog who will attack you. <laughs> so you go over there. So I went over there and I would play him. The, I put the, the headphones on the Walkman and I, I would play the, the, the tape for him and I'd give him a good price and I would start booking bands and I'd see you get a deposit when you book the band. See, that's what I lived on was the deposits. So if the band, I remember the first one was uh, 375 and I got a $175 deposit, man, that was like the best $175 I ever had, man. Because that, that was my now money. So the, maybe the gig was in six months, but I got a $175 deposit. So in any case, I started doing this to make some money. But I noticed that, you know, in order to book these gigs, man, I had to go face to face with these customers and how I beat my competition. And this is how you make money when you're broke. Okay. You have to be willing to do what other people are not willing to do to get the business. Okay. That's what you have to be willing to do. Now I was so desperate for money that I'd do anything. It, now I remember times I would get a call from Homestead, which was like two hours from where I was and people wanted to, wanted to, Meet me down there at nine o'clock at night. Cause the only time they can get everyone together. I knew they had five dogs. Okay. I would drive down there and put a suit and tie on. Okay. You talk about people's weddings. They, they want someone respectable there. They don't want a bum. Okay. So suit and tie nine o'clock at night, go to their house, make a full presentation to them with my tapes and look them in the eye and tell them, listen, I'm going to be there personally at your wedding to make sure everything goes great. Now, what did my competition do? They sent them a tape in the mail because they didn't want to drive down, get bit by their dogs. The dog's always on your leg, man. I mean, it's just they, if they don't have a dog. They get one just for you. Okay. It was unbelievable. The thing with the dogs. Okay. He's nice. He's in bite, you know, and he's ripping your neck off. Okay. Anyways, I wanted the gig. So I drove down there. I was belly to belly. And I gave them confidence because, you know, I showed them that I was willing to go the extra mile for them. And that's what my competition was not willing to do. That's how I beat the big boys who had been doing it for years and, and it made all the money because they were fat and happy. They don't want to do that anymore. I was hungry. I wanted it. Literally hungry, okay? So, you know, there was times, you know, I had to hustle. You know, I go down there and I learned to listen to the people. I say, what, you know, what kind of music are you guys looking for for your wedding? And I'd shut up and listen because you find out the craziest stuff. You know, I found out that, uh, okay, you know, my, my, my fiance, he is, you know, part Iranian. And, you know, we need someone to, uh, to do Iranian folk songs, like a couple of them, not the whole night, you know, maybe be like three Iranian folk songs. And so, well, what a coincidence. My bass player is half Iranian, too, you know. Then I'm on the phone to Bill saying, hey, Bill, man, we got to learn these tunes. You know, he's from Alabama. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, you do what you got to do. If you have to go to the Iranian embassy, get find an Iranian singer, have them sit in with the band and, and sing the Iranian songs, you make it happen you get your hustle on so if you're broke right now if you want to make money what you got to be willing to do 
and I did it, and I'm doing it, is you got to be willing to do what other people aren't willing to do. If you need to drive down three hours from where you live, in the middle of the night, make a presentation, get bit by some dogs, get Iranian uh, uh, folk singers to show up at your band, you do it. You do what other people aren't willing to do. Now, I was not the most talented musician in my band, okay? There were other guys. Matter of fact, I surrounded myself with guys who were all better than me. I was the hustler. I was the guy who made it happen, okay? Now, uh, what I, I would ask for my musicians, I'd make three times as much money as a lot of these guys. Once I got this going, I was making you know, three times as much money. I mean, I agreed to pay them what they wanted. It was the normal rate for what they did or even a little bit better. Um, I said, well, why don't you do what I do, man? You're playing, complaining about being broke. You could go out and do exactly what I'm doing, maybe even better than how I'm doing it. Oh, man, I don't want to do that. It's too much hassle. It's too much stress. Well, let me tell you something. There are a lot of people out there who feel it's too much hassle and too much stress. That's great for you. Because if you're willing to get your hustle on, let's, let's bring back some stuff from the 80s here, okay? Get your hustle on. You can make it happen, man. You can beat those people. You can beat the fat cats by answering your phone and talking to people, showing up and talking to people in person. When, when, you're, when people call your competition, they can press one for this. Marque el dos para español. Marque el tres, you know. On and on and on and on and on. Give them the personal touch. Be willing to do what other people aren't willing to do. Go the extra mile. Get those Iranian singers if you got to get the Iranian singers. If you need to get bit by their dog, get bit by their dog. Listen to what the customers want. Give them what they want. So one thing you can do if you're broke is find a service that you can do. Because services, you can get paid right away. Okay, find a service. Look what your customers, or your competition, excuse me, is doing. Offer a better deal. Flat out, better deal than their competition. And offer personal service. You could always beat the big boys with personal service. Now, I don't know what you can do or what you can't do. Okay, maybe you can paint houses. Maybe you can fix stuff. I can't. Well, I'm not good at it, okay? But... Whatever you can do, find out how you could do it better than your competition. And services work good if you're starting from nothing. Because like I said, I lived off those deposits. I lived off what people gave me right away to book the band. So anything like that, you could book a job and get a deposit is great. And work harder, do it better, give better value than your competition. Go the extra mile and personal service. You're there. Okay. You're the one making it happen. Your customers will have a lot of confidence in that and your, your, your competition isn't, isn't willing to do that most of the time. There's a lot of people who aren't willing to do that. So there's huge opportunities there. So how do you make money when you're broke? You get your hustle on and you start doing what other people aren't willing to do. And you won't be broke anymore. And I'm not broke anymore. And that's how you do it, okay? This is Matt from quickregister.net just sharing a little history with you. <laughs> I hope it helps you out. Maybe it's not what you want to hear. Uh, maybe it's a little tough love, but uh, that's kind of the way it goes. Uh, it's reality. All right, good luck to you.